Brooklyn Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Uh, good to see you all today, or actually not to see you, but good to have you see me, me, me maybe. Um, anyway, I want to do a quick shout out again to uh, my notification squad. You guys are rock stars. Uh, if you guys out there want to get cool videos coming your way or good streaming, and you want to be able to ask questions in real time, particularly for streaming, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so we can keep videos coming your way. Um, we've got a lot to cover today, and um, but before we get started, if I can get my, my team to kind of let me know who's out there, that'd be super awesome. Let's see here. We've got, uh, man, uh, whoop whoop. We've got punk rock. We've got Olivia Wenya. Uh, let's see where you guys are coming from today. We are talking about the Philippines. Philippe Bouchard. How you doing, Philippe? Uh, Val Brooks. Hey, where's my where's my uh, my hairy guy? Is he out there somewhere? Uh, we've got uh, Vashek from Poland. We got Tracy from my my uh, Facebook. Uh, we've got David. David, good to see you. We've got Manjesh Raju from Iron Maiden. Oh, good. I'm glad you finally got that gig. Zuzlina. How you doing, Zuzlina from the Czech Republic? Uh, well, you guys are going too fast for me. Slipping through these. Is that you doing this? Um, anyway, we've got Sandy from Canada. Uh, we've got Ken's hair is as luxurious as hell. <laughs> I didn't know hell was luxurious. <laughs> How about heaven? Anyway, uh, Dan McCoy from Cheyenne. We've got Shining from Germany. Uh, man, we've got people from Singapore, Nigeria, the Netherlands, more Poland, uh, London, London. Hey, you Londoners, man, they got you on serious lockdown, don't they, man? That's like almost criminal. Um, anyway, I'm looking forward to the scene. Thank you, Zizlina. Yeah, um, now, I want to, as I, before I get started into all this stuff, hold on, let me blow my schnoz. Um, got a little bit of dust today. <laughs> Excuse me for that. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, it's a union nose. You can do anything you want with it so long as you don't pick it. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I want to get, wow, look at all the people are signing on. Big Bear, Greece. Hey, Maria, I'm going to hopefully be in your neck of the woods. I'm going to uh, try to summer on the island of Crete. Um, it's already prepaid for, but that depends on what happens with uh, travel. Italy. Hello, Italy. Uh, South Africa. South America. More India. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. And Mexico, Rio de Janeiro. Good job. Hey, wow, we've got Facebook login. So we've got both Facebook and YouTube. So we're connected to both of my Facebook channels and my YouTube uh, all simultaneously. It's been taking a while. I got my new camera up. It's rocking. Finally, it took a while to get that thing to work properly. Got my mic. So we got some good audio today. Anyway, I really want to get rocking on this. And before I forget, uh, I want to remind you guys, I'm doing this every Thursday at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10 Pacific Standard Time, so Los Angeles time. And I'm also doing this every Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Los Angeles time. This coming Saturday is going to be strictly Q&A. So I've gotten a gob of questions from you guys, and I want to answer those. Um, and I'm sorry for not being able to answer, but a lot of times you guys ask me questions that are off topic. And if they're off topic, it takes away from um, the potency of the subject, so uh, that that particular subject I'm on. So with that said, um, welcome to uh, the best diet for singers. I'm doing ten painless and easy tips. Um, now, when I say things like tips, uh, these are usually uh, things that are. One tip might have 20 things involved in it. So it's a tip, yes, but I have to qualify what that means. So we did one of these already on nutrition. This is not going to be just about overall health and nutrition. This gonna be, is going to be specifically related to the voice, and there's a reason for that. We could talk about nutrition for hours, and I could give you a ton of information, but this one particularly is going to also focus in on colds and flu, um, and, and you know lung and respiratory issues because a lot of people are, are experiencing that, um, allergies and things like that, but, but specifically diet, and then I'll break into some of the dietary supplements for that. So I'm just going to dive right in, guys, because we have a lot of stuff to cover. So if people haven't tuned in yet, they're going to have to watch the replay. And I recommend, speaking of replay, um, I recommend watching these things back. So if you just kind of graze over stuff, you might miss a lot, and this is a lifetime of information, so uh, I think it'll be worth your while to do that. Anyway, uh, to, so to get started, these tips will be direct, directly related to your voice, and it's not 10 uh, painless tips for the overall health of body health and strength. It's, again, specifically related to your voice. So before getting started, I want to make clear uh, that there's some choices we make um, with regards to things that directly affect our voices, okay? So as we're going through dietary tips, 
Let's talk about, it's not just the diet in and of itself because there's lots of things about the diet that have to happen before that. So we've talked about this already, but I wanna, uh, I wanna go back and, and uh, revisit a couple of these things. Um, so the first thing I wanna talk about is inflammation and sugars, okay? Inflammation and sugars. Those are two arch enemies to the voice. And I won't get time to cover all the stuff and all the anti-inflammatory foods or foods that are uh, non-inflammatory or just good foods that won't cause inflammation. So I'm not gonna go into all that, but I am gonna talk about anti-inflammatory dietary foods specifically related to the voice. We're gonna get to that in a second. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, there's other things that, uh, that affect us in the area of uh, production of mucus, uh, dehydration, um, different types of collagen. Everyone thinks, oh, I gotta take collagen. Well, that just so happens there's a lot of different types of collagen and we're gonna talk about that because we discussed in one of my live streams that the vocal folds themselves, the cords, are made up of collagen, but there are different types of collagen and we're gonna cover that today. Uh, and then there's collagen that's related to muscle growth. So, um, so while the collagen in the folds themselves are made of collagen, there's also collagen that aids in the uh, arytenoid and also uh, the thyroid cartilage and muscle structure it's, it, it itself. So we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk, like I said, about supplements. Humidifiers, humidification, because the last thing we want is dehydration, so we'll talk more about dehydration. Essential oils, you know, people, um, you know, some people laugh at them, and I'm like, man, they really work. We've talked about this before, so I'm gonna get into a little bit of that. Um, dairy products, you know, we've talked about this before too. Um, you know, their negative effects, just don't do it. It's just not worth it for you singers out there unless you feel like you really have to. Um, and and, and, and by the way, a lot of people, I get this comment, I've, I've heard people say, well, I drink milk because I need my calcium. Well, it just so happens, I'm gonna talk about nut milks in a bit, but I'm gonna just use one example. Um, almond milk, for example, and it's if you get good organic almond milk, it tastes every bit as good as regular milk, in my opinion, or real close, but, and it has considerably more calcium than cow's milk. You heard me right. Almond milk has more calcium than, than, than regular cow's milk. And there's other, there's other like vegetables and proteins and stuff, um, vegetables that have protein, excuse me, that are, that exceed per weight, uh, that of red meats and things like that. And I'm not saying don't eat a good steak once in a while, but I am saying that there's really healthy supplements to that. So don't buy into this thing. I gotta have, you know, a bunch of red meat to get my protein. Though there are some specific B vitamins involved in red meat that are cool. You could also take those as supplements. But anyway, I'm not to get derail and get sidetracked here, but I want to bring that up. So um, dairy products, nutrient absorption. We talked about that a little bit. I'm going to talk more about that today, especially through the stomach. You know, you've heard of leaky gut um, and, and all the probiotics that we'd like to take as a result of that. Alcohol and caffeine, the dehydration that does, how it, alcohol uh, eats away at the lining and the walls of your stomach. Uh, so does ibuprofen and things like that too. So uh, you wanna be careful with really acidic foods or really spicy foods. Um, avoid processed sugars of all, all kinds. We talked about that. And you know what processed sugars are, man. Anything, you know, potato chips and ice cream and sodas and stuff like that. I don't wanna go into all that stuff today because I wanna stay focused on, on, um, on what specifically helps your voice. Um, but anyway, those processed sugars substantially increase inflammation. So you guys got to really watch out for that. It also is, is extreme in mucus production. And we want to avoid that as well uh, because mucus production isn't just on the folds directly, but directly affects the sinuses. It can affect you know the trachea, the wall, and the lining of the stomach. Like there's all kinds of things that uh, mucus production can affect. Um, we want to avoid extreme temperature changes if we can. Hot, cold, cold, hot, back and forth. Going into a warm building, you know, rushing out to a, a air conditioned car, or going into a you know whatever a heated car, or heated building, rushing out into the freezing cold. Those are things that directly affect the voice, as we know. Fatigue. Of course, fatigue, getting good sleep, directly affects the voice. We talked about that in one of my sessions. Fitness, and by the way, this is just a pre preview of things we've already, a preview, excuse me, um, it's a preview to what we're talking about today, but something we've already talked about before. And I wanna, again, revisit these things so it reminds us, oh yeah, I remember Ken talking about those things. And if you don't remember, I forget which video it is, but go back and check out you know, the, uh, the video I did on, on uh, I think it was Best Diets or To Stay Healthy or something like that. I'll, I'll put it in the description uh, shortly. But anyway, blood circulation, very, very important. Let's not forget 
blood and iron carries oxygen to the muscles, etc. It's what gives you energy. So without it, you're, you're walking around like a slug all the time. And if you put, if you eat sludge, sludge energy is going to come out. So if you eat good things, good energy will come out. Mental and physical stress management. That's also really big for vocal folds and for good, um, not just vocal health, but your immune function and so forth. So cardiovascular health, that's very, very, very important. Overall body strength and psychological preparedness. Well, it sounds like big fancy words. Are you gonna become a psychologist today, Ken? No, but I wanna talk about how you can psychologically prepare, prepare for things so your body doesn't go into fight or flight and you freak out and you break down the immune system, which is really important. So all of this is by way of review. Uh, to some extent, I'd like to go quickly through some of these things because they will be directly related to the subject matter. Um, but I wanna get started on number one. So all this was you know, a build up to number one. I want to start this, and these are in no specific order, but I thought I would put them in an order that made sense to me um, because a lot of times, a lot of people think, okay, well, you know, when I'm feeling good and I'm feeling strong, that's when I feel I sing my best. Yeah, understandably, right? So what kinds of things contribute to feeling good and feeling strong? So I wanted to start with healthy, high carbohydrates um, that are good. So now we've talked about uh, whole food plant-based or plant-based whole foods, I should say it the other way. Um, we did a whole thing on that already, so I'm not gonna cover that. I'm gonna cover specific things that are good for singers, okay? First one is organic quinoa, it's like, Quinoa, Ew, do I really have to eat that stuff? It's actually pretty good. Um, it's great, it's high in protein, uh, which is good, um, and it's a good fiber. So, if you know what I mean, dropping some kids off at the pool, releasing some hostages, <laughs> it's good for that. Ken, did you just really say that? Yes, I did. Um, anyway, organic oats, and the reason I keep saying organic is because we have glyphosate, glyphosate excuse me, say that three times fast, um, that you know, they're pouring weed killer on everything, and they're actually changing like GMO foods, uh, which means genetic, genetically modified organisms. Um, the body is a really, really difficult time uh, digesting this stuff, so uh, organic foods for the most part should be uh, non-GMO and, and shouldn't contain contain weed killer, okay? Uh, so, um, and we know Roundup and some of the nasty stuff that contain glyphosate. So you really wanna watch out for that because it's a, it's a bad guy for the gut and a bad guy for the immune system. Now, these, um, a lot of these are really great sources Oh, did I say oats? I meant to say oats was another one. So oats is really good. Really good, healthy, organic oats. Uh, these are great for vitamins and minerals. They're great antioxidants. In fact, um, oats, rolled oats, contain 66% carbohydrates, which is, and then nearly 11% fiber. And for you guys that don't want to hear numbers, I'm not going to do this to you all the way through, but it's a really high uh, uh, um, content, carb content, but it's also really good for fiber uh, and contains what's called a soluble fiber. Um, it's called beta glucan so that soluble fiber actually absorbs it's not just that it doesn't get digested it gets digested with nutrients and it becomes a fiber that helps you eliminate so there's not all not all fibers are created equal like psyllium for example is great to go to the bathroom but it really it's not going to help you at all in the nutrient department and in some cases actually lodges in the colon and, and I don't want to take all the time to talk about you know uh, diverticulitis and all the things that happen in the colon but that that could happen and that happens with nuts not getting chewed up and some other things like that so they're uh, they're really it's, and also oats are a great source of protein so eating oats can uh, lower your blood sugar level okay um, and especially in people with type 2 diabetes it's actually really good for that and um, you know there it's just all around a great thing now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some sugars that we can eat remember I said don't eat a lot of sugars because they can be bad well there's some good sugars that we can eat bananas is one of them right go bananas go go bananas come on you kids out there um, anyway and so they're among maybe one of the world's best fruits for just you know, having a sugar that you that is is, is okay for the body, um, but it's also really accessible. You can get them almost any time around year round, which is great. Um, they're made of 23% carbs, which is good. There's a lot of carbs in them, um, and then um, it's also there's different forms of starches and sugars, so it carries both good forms of starch and sugar. Now there's there's what are called carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. I don't have time to get into all that. I'm just giving you 
foods that you can eat. So, okay, so Ken said quinoa, oats, and bananas. Yes, that's what I've said so far. Um, unripe green bananas, by the way, and uh, plantana and, and whatnot are excellent because um, they transform into uh, natural sugars. And as the, began, uh, the bananas ripen, um, and they yellow in the process, the, the fullness of the sugars come in, but it's really high in vitamin B6 and C, and also very high in potassium. So they have a lot of good compounds that really helps with energy, good clean energy. So like if you notice, when you uh, let's say you, you eat some candy or some chocolate or some drink a soda or something, you drink that, right? And then you crash pretty quickly, like an hour or so after that. Well, these sugars don't do that to you. So they're really good, clean, long-lasting sugars or any good uh, carbohydrate will do that where it'll be a really good, long-lasting, uh, clean sugar. So, and due to the potassium comp, comp Content, say that three times fast. It helps with blood pressure. So, potassium is really good for blood pressure and it overall good heart health. So, that's awesome. So, it also contains a decent amount of resistant starch and pectin. Pectin is really good for digestive health, guys. So, um, and it, it has a friendly gut bacteria. We're going to talk about that when we get into probiotics in a minute. Um, but they're, like I said, they're high in potassium. So, it helps regulate blood pressure pressure. So if you got blood pressure issues and stuff, and I'm not overstating this, but it really does work. And un unripe bananas also contain a starch. When I said pectin, um, as it improves digestive health, it also helps the stomach heal the lining and the walls of the stomach from leaky gut. Another good thing that does that is good bone broth. So um, again, I covered that already in another subject, but it's really good to help heal the lining of the walls of the stomach so it absorbs the nutrients that can get into the blood and give you good energy. Okay. Um, speaking of potassium, uh, potatoes are excellent. In fact, that's how potatoes got its name. Potato, potassium. It's literally a derivation of the word potassium is how we get the term potatoes. Now, there's all kinds of different kinds of potatoes, different kinds of different kinds. Um, but, you know, we really, sweet potatoes are great or like yams are great or Mexican yams. We know wild, I said Mexican yams are great. Regular potatoes contain a lot of sugar uh, that doesn't process as good as like, believe it or not, a sweet potato. So sweet potatoes are actually better for you. Uh, might sound strange, but it's true. Um, anyway, and they're, you know, a good, a good starch a good sugar and a good source of fiber, um, good source of vitamin A. It's got a lot of vitamin C and of course potassium. And they're really rich in antioxidants. And we're gonna talk a little bit about antioxidants because um, those are the things that really help us fight off infection, the bad guy, bad, bad guy, um, uh, bad guy uh, anti antibo antibodies, gives you good antibodies. I will get my uh, my speech together at some point today. Anyway, and it could help um, oxidative damage. So um, there's things that oxidate in the bloodstream in the body. Um, it could help with that, lowering the risk of heart disease, a, a lung disease, uh, liver and kidney disease. Like it's amazing how this stuff works. Now it's not like Western medicine where they everyone expect, expects to take this pill and all of a sudden they get better. That life doesn't work like that. And if something you think you're gonna like in Western medicine, you kind of like help the liver by taking this pill and a lot of times it is really hard on the kidney or you take something for the kidney it's really hard on the liver or you do something for the endocrine system and it's really hard on another part of the body. So a lot of times in Western medicine we do something that heals maybe one part of the body but in doing that it affects and puts stress and strain on another part of the body whereas these things don't do that. They are total body health and help the body heal itself over time and that's what we want. So anyway, um, beta carotene, vitamin A, um, and lots of antioxidants, like I said, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Beets, right? Big red beets. They are actually really good. I've never liked beets until maybe, I don't know, eight or nine years ago as a kid. I, Ew, beets, right? But when I tried them and I put them in shakes and smoothies or on a salad or something, they're really, really good. I didn't realize how good they were. And, and beta roots, um, the purple ones, the vegetable beta roots, um, commonly referred to as beets, you can do them raw, you can do them cooked, you can do them any way, but they're packed with all kinds of vitamins and minerals and a really great source of energy. It's got good sugars in it, good antioxidants, um, and it's it has a, a lot of plant compounds, so it actually is compounded with a lot of different plant types within its ability uh, to, to put off these antioxidants or potent antioxidants that are in it, um, and it changed, it's high in inorganic nitrates, so um, we want that, and bad nitrates like in wine, like alcohol, 
alcohol that's been fermented and stuff, um, or and there's other things that that ferment. We want good nitrates, and and an example of that is kombucha. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But things that are fermented, um, fermented vegetables. We're going to get into that in a minute too. That are really, really excellent. Uh, nature's best probiotics that you can get. Uh, we actually want that process. So um, anyway. Uh, 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 so nitric oxide, oxide lowers blood pressure and may cause, the, actually it, it decreases the risk of a lot of different kinds of diseases as well. Um, and you know, beets, so beets. So here we got again, quinoa and bananas and oats and uh, whatever, what else we say, beets and different things. Just go back through this list and just kind of make a quick list of yourself. I'm explaining what they are. By the way, we're only on tip number one <laughs> and I, it's not this extensive on the rest of the tips, but. But we're talking about foods here, so I want to give you guys enough to chew on. <laughs> anyway, so um, the next one is oranges. Now, oranges are interesting because though they contain a lot of sugar, the vitamin C content, as you know, is phenomenal. And though they are can be acidic with citric acid, that's what it's called, the acid itself actually helps neutralizing with balance, a pH balance in the stomach, instead of contributing and creating a high acidic content of, of, of acids in the stomach, it actually helps balance them out. So, unless you drink too much. Um, so, and, and though they're high in sugars, it's actually got 11.8% carbohydrates in it, believe it or not. Good source of fiber, you wouldn't think so, but oranges are a good source of fiber. Good vitamin C, uh, good potassium, vitamin B also, um, and the citric acid, is really, really good because uh, it improves heart health. Uh, it helps prevent kidney stones. So if you've ever had kidney stones and know what that's like, high concentrates of freshly squeezed organic orange juice is awesome for that. I have a quick orange juice story for you guys. Um, one time I was, I think I shared this with you before, um, I was at a show in Europe and I forget where we were, but I was coming down with a really bad flu. And I have all my tinctures and stuff, but I didn't have access to them because this happened just before I was about to go on stage. So I didn't have my suitcase with all my goodies in it and it hit me hard and fast. And back in the day, we used to wear black leather boots, you know, and we were sitting under these lights that, I'm not kidding, the stage had to be 115, 120 degrees, straight up. And they asked me what I wanted to drink. And I'd remembered, well, I, I'd heard of what were called citrus flushes, so orange juice or grapefruit juice or, you know, pineapple juice, etc. And I thought, well, I'm gonna try it right here on stage. And what a citrus flush is, in this case, an orange juice flush, is that you drink a gob of orange juice and you sweat it all out via aerobic exercise. And usually because of wearing this leather jacket, leather pants, and you know, you know, having a guitar on, running around under these lights, etc., and singing your brains out, um, usually you sweat like a pig. And so I did it and I had three two liter things of orange juice that I finished in a 90 minute set. I had to pee like a racehorse afterwards. But um, at the end, I felt absolutely no flu at all whatsoever. So that's really interesting because it's a it's a viral fungal fighter and um, uh, there's a lot of you know stuff floating around that um, and again this is uh, I am not a doctor I'm not prescribing anything to you guys if you feel you have a medical condition please see your licensed healthcare practitioner I'm not here to give you medical advice I'm here to give you personal advice but what I understand and I have a lot of friends um, that are uh, in India. Of course, as you guys can see, look at my chat window, all the different people from different countries, right? But from China specifically, and even in the Wuhan district. And a lot of them said that a lot of people were cured of COVID-19 through intravenous, high doses of intravenous feedings of vitamin C. So, and a lot of the poorer countries that don't have access to fancy medicine and, and all these respirators and different things, they have also been known to be cured of high doses of vitamin C. So I'm just putting that out there of the people that have emailed me or corresponded with me talking about this and I know from my own personal experience like I just said being on stage how well this works so some doctors might go ah come on here's the pill T Dr. Fauci you know take your uh, you know take your uh, uh, your vaccination and shut up yeah eat healthy get a high, high immune system there's no better cure for the body than having a great immune function and a good diet anyway so it also um, increases your uptake of iron 
in the body. And remember, we just talked about what iron does is iron goes to the blood cell molecules, white blood cell molecules, and it, and it goes to your muscle structures um, and it feeds oxygen to your muscles. Now, your, your vocal folds carry is a group of muscles, as you know, as we've discussed. And so it carries oxygen to muscle structure and helps reduce inflammation. So, and also the risk of anemia. So anemia is, is basically an iron deficiency. So it helps with that. Um, and, you know, we've heard about curing scurvy and other things. Sailors used to, you know, eat, eat this to get keep from getting scurvy and so forth. So anyway, good stuff. Blueberries are awesome in antioxidants as well. They're delicious, um, simply delicious for my Seinfeld friends out there. Um, anyway, and it's a superfood. What is a superfood? Superfoods are things that contain a lot of the components for the basic nutrition uh, nutrients for the building blocks of life. And so uh, an example of a superfood is blueberries. An example of a superfood is a drink could be coconut water or coconut milk coconuts. Um, there are papaya is a superfood. There's a lot of really good superfoods and blueberries is one of them. By the way, the things I just mentioned are also good. I didn't put them here because that is really more for health health and wellness and is not directly related to vocal folds, but um, blueberries are. So um, they consist mostly of water and it's about 14, 15% carbohydrates, um, high amounts of vitamin K, vitamin C and manganese. Now, vitamin K is, we talked about potassium. This is a different form of potassium and how that helps um, in the bloodstream. So um, studies have shown that blueberries safeguard your body from oxidative damage. We talked about that. Um, they also may improve memory. It helps with memory dysfunction. So that's awesome. Um, they're just phenomenally healthy. So next thing is grapefruit. I just mentioned that as far as a drink. Grapefruit is a citrus fruit. Fruit, uh, sweet, bitter, and sour, 9% carbs. Um, it also has tons of different vitamins and minerals in it. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but it can also help prevent kidney stones. So as much as orange juice can do that, so can um, grapefruit and grapefruit juices. Uh, it lowers cholesterol. It's a known fact that it does that. And it also protects against cold colon cancer. So that's super awesome. Uh, it it's, uh, uh, also helps balance pH balance of acid in the stomach, just like orange juice, like we said. Apples, apples are awesome. Um, it's a popular fruit. You can get it a lot, mostly through the winter months, which is surprising as a fruit to get a good fruit that's good winter month, month fruit. Um, you can get all kinds of different types of apples. They're about 13 um, to 15% carbohydrates. Um, and most of them contain a lot of different vitamins and minerals. And they vary in, in, in what each different apple does, but most of them are really consistent. We all know it's a, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. You've heard that. Well, there's a lot of truth to that because they're all also really high in uh, vitamin C and antioxidants. Um, and there's a lot of different health, uh, health benefits such as apple pectin. So we talked about what pectins do um, and they also help stave off certain types of cancer. Um, and it's really good to help improve blood sugar. Now you wouldn't think a sugar would help mitigate and control blood sugar, but these actually do do that. Um, it also reduces the risk of heart disease. Now, Actual other foods, we talk about apples and can I can't live on apples. You know, can I can't live on just oats. I know, we're getting there. Kidney beans, kidney beans, right? Uh, it's a great common bean. Uh, there, it's about 23% carbs. It's a lot of carbs in there good starches and fiber. Uh, they're also very high in protein, uh, rich in all kinds of different vitamins and minerals. Um, and then we also have different flavonoids and I can't go into all of this, what these things do for you, but kidney beans are good. They also help blood sugar um, and don't eat them raw. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of, oh, if I do this, maybe if I try it raw, it's gonna be better for me. Not in the case of kidney beans, especially. Um, they, they, they could actually really, really hurt you. Um, and I don't want to go into the details, but they can actually become poisonous in the system and uh, just cook them, okay? Uh, really good stuff. Anyway, chickpeas, right? We also know them as garbanzo beans. Those are great. Uh, almost 30% carbs, good fiber. Um, it's a good plant-based protein. So you can eat chickpeas. Those are good. Good vitamin B, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different things that these things do, but I'm just going to tell you these are really, really good, clean sources of energy and good protein proteins that also help build um, you know, back muscle structure. Good digestive health for chickpeas also. Um, of course, uh, carrots. Like there's lots of foods that I'm not gonna get to cover, but quickly, carrots, 
buckwheat, high carb, carb foods like that. So pretty much any you know, plant-based whole food is gonna be good for you. These are specific to things that give you good energy. Remember when we started this part, you know, what is it that I feel good, Ken, then I feel like I can sing great. These will give you great, clean sources of energy, okay? So um, I can't recommend them more highly. Now, as we know, beans and rice, as you know, it's a starch and a protein, beans a protein, rice a starch. Um, we know that that compounds together to make a protein also. So even just those two things eaten together is a really great source, not only of um, good uh, complex, uh, um, excuse me, carbohydrates, but also protein. So it, also, it aids in both, uh, both things. So, um, ne okay, now we're number two. We're gonna talk about healthy proteins. Um, free range, oh, by the way, eggs have gotten such a bad rap. Not a lot of people can eat them. There is this been back and forth in the FDA float around. You know, they're good, they're bad, they're good, they're bad. I never left them. <laughs> anyway, but really, seriously, um, they are a great source of protein. And yes, don't eat a gob of anything. And yes, they, they do contain some cholesterol. But guys, by the way, it's not just cholesterol that creates heart disease, it's bad cholesterol. There's good, there's LDL, there's you know all different types of cholesterol. I don't have time to talk about that today, but don't, when you hear the word cholesterol, that doesn't mean it's bad. There's good cholesterol, and without good cholesterol, you're gonna die, okay? so. I, I, I hopefully at some point we can talk about all the nuances of what these things actually mean. But in the case of eggs, free range, grass fed, hormone free eggs are great. They're great. Don't let anybody tell you that they're not. They're good and good for you. And they're one of the most nutritious foods you can eat. Uh, they're an excellent source of vit vitamins and minerals. They've got good healthy fats in it, good omega-3 fats in them. Um, it's got uh, eye-protecting, eye-protecting antioxidants. Just like um, carotene, beta-carotene and vitamin A are in carrots, eggs continue, uh, contain really good um, antioxidants for the eyes. Whole food eggs are a great protein. Um, best if you could just eat egg whites because then it doesn't have any any possibility of negative cholesterol, so that's great. Uh, and you know, there are people that are are, are allergic, allergic to eggs. Well, then don't eat them. But 33% protein in an egg, it's good stuff. Six grams of protein in a single egg, and it's only 78 calories. So that's another thing. A lot of these foods you want to eat if you're concerned about your weight and diet. I'm recommending things to you that are not going to make you fat, and they'll burn off quickly. They'll burn off clean. They'll help you actually burn off. Off fat in good healthy ways and they're not going to contribute to obesity or just bad fats okay um, so almonds now almonds are incredible I'm gonna get to some into some of these nuts here um, you know it's it's very popular tree nut as you guys know very rich in essential nut nutrients um, fiber vitamin E which we need badly especially if we don't get a chance to go outside um, we're gonna take vitamin D drops and we're gonna talk about vitamin D in a minute. Um, and manganese and, and magnesium. And magnesium we need a lot of. Now, a lot of, uh, um, throughout the 70s and 80s, there was this whole thing, you gotta drink milk because you need calcium, you need calcium, you need calcium. Well, come to find out, actually, we don't want too much calcium. Calcium literally can calcify in the vein structure and cause plaque if we get too much. Ma magnesium actually is what helps contribute to the correct absorption of calcium, and that's why I recommended that um, that shake or that drink, excuse me, not shake, but that drink called Calm, C-A-L-M, like, ah, I'm so calm. Um, that's really good because it contains really good magnesium for calcium absorption for bones and teeth and so forth. So we want to, we, we've got new information, new technology, and but we know that almonds are excellent for that. And we just talked about how much calcium is in almonds versus milk, right? It contains more calcium, good calcium than milk does. Grass-fed, free-range horm uh, free hormone-free chicken. Chicken is great, guys. If you eat it without the skin, that's where most of the calories come from. It's an excellent source of protein. Believe it or not, broccoli. Yes, I said broccoli. Incredible, healthy vegetable. Great vitamin C, great vitamin K, um, and uh, good potassium, bioactive nutrients, you know, gut, good gut flora nutrients. It helps staves off cancer. It's good for fighting colon cancer. Um, it's calorie per calorie. It's high in protein compared with most vegetables, and actually also per, per weight um, is, is also right up there with meats. So eating like a hard meat, it's right up there with it. It's 33% 
of the calories in one cup of chopped broccoli is three grams of protein and only 31 calories, so that's amazing. Now, uh, lean, grass-fed, hormone-free beef. I like a good steak, guys, but uh, don't eat too much of it, but there's nothing wrong with a good, healthy piece of red meat. And the vitamin B content, B6, B12, some other things, it's one of the only sources that you can actually get those kinds of vitamins without taking them as a supplement. So there's nothing wrong with eating, a, a, you know, four ounces, three, four ounces of beef, good, healthy beef, nothing wrong with it. So don't let the world tell you there's something wrong with it. It's really high in B12, which is incredible. You, you heard people, I'm gonna go get my, my vitamin B shot or I'm gonna go ahead and get take vitamin B capsules. Well, B6 and B12, particularly B12, is an energy booster almost like caffeine. I mean, I kid you not, it's like you do some B12, and you're like, whoa, man, this is rocking. Now, in the supplement world, there's different types of B12. There's pure B12 supplements you can get. I don't wanna get into details on this because I'm not even gonna go to this. This is more about body health rather than singing health, but I will say there's two types. Get the expensive type because the cheap type is a process that is a double process. They get the B12 from and it doesn't work worth the crap. Get the stuff that's a direct derivation of B12, and if you're gonna do a supplement, use that. Wild caught fish, guys, is really good. Don't get farmed fish. It's horrible for you. Get wild caught fish. It, you could get tuna, you could get salmon, you could get um, you know different forms of, of uh, you know salmon has really good high fat, high fats in it. Tuna really doesn't have that much fat at all in it, but they're all really good in omega-3 fats and that's really good. It's a 84% protein, especially tuna, um, and it's just 27 grams of protein with only 128 calories. So if you wanna stay off and not eat so much fat and you wanna do a, a very lean protein, do tuna. Now unfortunately, the larger the tuna, the bigger the fish, right? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Oh, but I'm bum. No, seriously though, tuna, larger tunas, such as white albacore, are not as good for you because it contains high levels of mercury, unfortunately. And we've talked a bit about um, uh, heavy metals in the body that we're trying to get rid of, like cilantro can help you get rid of heavy metals. Um, you know, believe it or not, you want the cheaper tunas because the cheaper tunas are usually the smaller tunas that are, you know, the not the beautiful white albacore, which tastes the best to me, of course, but um, doesn't contain that much mercury. So the cheaper tunas don't have that much mercury. Lentils, lentils are excellent. High in fiber, magnesium, potassium, iron folate, copper, ma manganese, and other great nutrients. So lentils are awesome. Um, anyway, now I wanna talk about uh, high protein uh, legumes or legumes. Soybeans are excellent. We talk about kidney beans and chickpeas, but I wanna talk about some breads. Now, not all breads are, are created equal. And even breads that, again, non-GMO, breads, breads that are organic, we really want to focus on those breads because a lot of the breads that are going around the wheat, a lot of the wheat uh, and a lot of the oat breads and whatnot, uh, especially oats too, are really nasty in absorbing glyphosates. And if you, these, these, this, this poison, this weed killer, uh, gets into your bloodstream and can really wreak havoc on your nervous system, your digestive tract, your immune system, it's awful stuff. So a really good bread is Ezekiel bread. I eat it almost daily. It's a really great, and it's different from other breads because it's made of organic sprouted wheat or and you can get different types of Ezekiel bread and there's other good breads like this too it's, this is not the only one but um anyway sprouted whole grains legumes legumes however you want to say it it has millet barley spelt organic wheat soybeans and lentils and that's all in this bread so you get this all this stuff I just mentioned with a complex as a complex carbohydrate or, or as a carbohydrate excuse me um, it's all in the bread and so you could do like, you know, some Ezekiel bread with, you know, some, yeah, put, put some tuna on it, put some peanut butter on that or like an, or like cashew butter or almond butter or something like that. And I'm telling you, you'll find as you start to do this, you're going to get this crazy clean energy that you're going, gosh, I just feel so good. I want to sing. Ah! Right? <laughs> anyway, a bad rendition of the immigrant song. Uh, but anyway, so compared to most other breads, Ezekiel bread is high in protein, fiber, and various nutrients. And protein content is about 20%, uh, and the calories are only 80 calories. So uh, but that's pretty good. One slice is, is really low in calories. Now, we want to stay with things that are low glycemic things, low in glycemic sugars. So because those sugars are bad for us, again, too much of them, of course, can cause diabetes and other really bad things for us. 
pumpkin seeds. These are awesome. They're delicious. I kid you not. Chow on these suckers, just pumpkin seeds. They're, they're amazing. Um, they're high in zinc, and we're going to talk about that. Magnesium, uh, just really good. Flax seeds are also really good. Sunflower seeds are really good. I'm back into the meat department. I forgot to mention turkey breast, organic, free range, hormone free. Uh, the turkey breast, turkey breast is great. It's a lot like chicken. Now, some things that I do personally is I like Dr. Furman uh, turned me on to doing blended salads. What is a blended salad? Believe it or not, you can take a ninja juicer, or not juicer, blender, right? It's uh, like the bullet. And if you haven't seen this, go look online, ninja bullet. Like, and you can take a gob of either, you know, high super uh, nutrient protein superfood um, uh, greens, which could be, you know, spinach and kale and this and that or whatever, or you could just use spinach if that is a little too, uh, it tastes, tastes too earthy, like eating dirt. Um, a spinach doesn't do that, but get some organic spinach and put a gob of it in. I mean, take a whole thing of you know of a of a, 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 a milkshake container and this juicer. You just screw on a little blade and you put it upside down. And you, so what I do is I stuff it full of vegetables. Like I said, those kinds of vegetables, salad vegetables. That's why it's called blended salads. And what it I what I do is I'll take a little almond milk or a little cashew milk or macadamia nut or or flaxseed milk, even hemp milk. Though that kind of tastes a little medicinal. Um, those really good for you. But anyway, so I'll take a little bit of almond milk. Try this. It'll blow your mind. Spinach, a little bit of almond milk, blend it. Take that. Oh, I'm sorry. Four dates, four medjool dates. I take, and, and that makes it really sweet. You don't have to do that many. I like it. You can also put some frozen banana in there. I'm good without it. It's plenty sweet. So you take some medjool dates, four of them, and you blend it first so that it's already blended. Then you're going to see that only about half of the the, uh, the cup is filled because it's blended it really good. Then you could take some blueberries, frozen blueberries that we just talked about, um, and put a good handful of them, those in there, and then take some cacao, fresh organic cacao. Really excellent antioxidant, incredible form of energy. Of course, it does have caffeine in it, but it's clean caffeine, more on the Garana original state of caffeine, not like taking a pill or even drinking coffee, and put it in there and blend it. And you might even throw like a couple frozen strawberries if you like a little more tart tasting. Put it in there, blend it, and, and suck that sucker down on an empty stomach. You will love the taste of it. I kid you not. This isn't just some tree hugging comment. You'll love the taste of it and you'll walk away going, dang, I want to sing straight up. All right. So anyway, um, and I want to talk about number three. Now, I'm only on number three. Ken, we're going to do 10 of these. It's going to go a little quicker in a minute. So thank you for staying with me, guys. But this is really lifetime learned valued information for specific things that help your vocal folds. So collagen. There's not all collagens are created equal. Not all collagens are clean sourced, and that is very important. But not all collagens of the types of collagen themselves are created equal. Now there's all different types of collagens, but there is a product out there, and I have no uh, skin in the game. I am not, uh, and I don't get any kickbacks from these guys. This is just stuff that I've used. So I'm sharing stuff that I personally like. You can do your own research, buy anything you want, wherever you want. I'm just making suggestions. So um, I am not a, what do they call it? A, um, yeah, one of those guys that sell stuff and, you know, whatever. So I, I have this stuff here and it's called Ancient Nutrition and this stuff is excellent. Now why is this good? Because it contains types 1, 2, three, five, and 10 different types of collagen protein. It's clean sourced and it works like crazy. Now, someone had said that my hair looked awesome when I first started. You know why? I'm not kidding. I do this, uh, just I do the, the scooper of it on an empty stomach in the morning and your hair and your nails and your skin and the collagen in your vocal folds and the muscle structures that surround your vocal folds really grow and have great vocal health from collagen. So I'm, my first dietary supplement I'm recommending is collagen because this stuff rocks and really works. And since I'm not an affiliate, that was the word I was looking for, um, I'm not saying you have to get this kind. It's not about that. I just know it works. Nut uh, Nutricel has another one. There's a few other good ones out there. But anyway, it's really good for building joints, ligaments, all kinds of stuff, hair, skin, nails, you know, your nails are going to grow like crazy. You're going to have to cut them a lot. Now, 
I talked about caffeine and alcohol being a no-no, and people say, "Well, Ken, I just can't give up my, you know, my coffee in the morning." Or, "Ken, I like to drink, you know, beer and wine or whatever." Beer contains yeast, and that could cause, you know, a candida and other, you know, sugar infections. Um, so it's your call, guys. It's your life. You live it the way you feel you you need to live it. I'm just telling you how these work, and the less we do of things that can hurt us, the better we're gonna sing. Okay? So coffee. Now, sugars are interesting because there are good sugars and bad sugars. Now, I drink green tea in the morning. I don't drink coffee. But what I do is I put some Manuka honey in it, okay? Now, I don't use this a ton because I can get fat doing this and we don't want to have a bunch of sugar in our body. But this stuff is awesome. It's incredible. Incredible for immune function. This stuff is rock star. Now, I like this company. It's called Comvita. And the reason I like it is I can get 2.2 pounds of this stuff. And you're going to look online and you're going to go, Manuka honey. Holy camoly, that stuff's so expensive. Yeah, what is the price of your health? I mean, if you go to a doctor, what's the price of your health? What's the, what price would you pay um, if you could sing better notes and sing them more consistently and you got sick less often and you could be more productive? So, I mean, people make these comments, it's true. And I think this sucker's like 80 bucks. I mean, it's pretty expensive. But, and the other brands are like twice as expensive as this and they have different ratings of the potency of it on it. But this stuff is a really good bang for your buck. So, I, I, so now if you, it, but it's high glycemic too. So if you have sugar issues, um, some things, now a lot of people do stevia. I did that for a long time. Um, it's, it's zero glycemic. It's kind of bitter and not all stevias are created equal. There's a liquid tincture stevia. There's a kind like there's Truvia. You've seen those little packets, Truvia, that contains monk fruit and stevia and some other things in it. Those are good, you know, um, but I actually really like monk fruit sweetener. This stuff, if you're looking for zero glycemic, this stuff is excellent. It tastes just like sugar. And the ratio is about, you know, one to one. So a tablespoon of sugar is about a tablespoon of monk fruit. They lie. They say it's a lot more potent in it. It's not, but it tastes just like sugar. It's not weird and hollow tasting like stevia is to me, or stevia can be weird. Like if you bake with it or cook with it, it turns bitter. This stuff doesn't do that. So kind of expensive, but it's worth it. It's really cool. Now other people will use like blue agave and stuff like that. That's really low glycemic and it also works excellent. It tastes just like sugar or honey or, you know, a combination kind of thereof, but it does have some sugar in it. So, uh, but blue agave is excellent. So I love this stuff. Um, the next thing is, um, uh, you know, what well, can I've got to put, you know, cream in my coffee or my tea or whatever. Actually, you really don't guys. There are so many great nut milks out there. I mentioned, um, almond milk, for example, and I personally like to buy the refrigerated kind that doesn't take, uh, contain carrageen gum in it, which is a preservative. Um, but I mean, that's not the end of the world. You can get it boxed. You can get it, you know, refrigerated, whatever. Try to get the, the, the organic, you know, carrageen free, uh, um, almond milk, or you can get hemp milk, macadamia nut milk, Another really great milk I've tried, I put it on cereal, all kind, all this stuff, I, I'll mix it with any time I'd use a milk, um, is flax milk. There's something called, what is it? Um, oh, it's, anyway, it's a refrigerated flax milk. It's in a box. I'll think of the name in a minute. But its stuff is excellent. I can't believe how good this stuff tastes. And again, I'm not a tree hugging kind of guy and I'm, I don't, I don't have to eat vegan. I love pizza and, you know, spaghetti and, you know, I, I mean, I'll eat a sweets here and there. I'm not, I don't hold it to the letter of the law like a lot of people do. I get where people are coming from when they do that, but it's hard to sustain that kind of lifestyle and not cheat once in a while and enjoy yourself. So if you can do things that are sustainable, you'll be able to do this long term. But flax, flax milk is excellent. So anyway, um, next thing, oh, and I wanna talk about um, uh, beverages that I like. So. You know, I'll, I'll do green tea, you know, myself in place of coffee, because then it gives you the zip without the crash, and it's really high in antioxidants, it's really good for circulation and things like that. So um, we're gonna talk about circulation now, so supplements for circulation. Cayenne pepper, capsicum, excellent. Not only is it good for your circulation, but it gets rid of plaque in the veins. Really, and it does an amazing job. I cannot tell you how many people I know that have done a regimen of just high doses of cayenne pepper, if your stomach can handle it, in the capsules, you know, it's really good for sinus, for sinus infections, clearing out sinusitis and relieving, you know, mucus in the sinus cavity. But what's really good about it is, um, is back to the plaque thing, people that have had high cholesterol and high plaque content in their veins doing this going back to their doctor and the doctor going, 
what in the world did you do? And they say, all I did was capsicum. It's like, really? Really? And it just blows out the plaque out of the veins. It's incredible. Chickweed, chickweed is great. Ginger, I'll do ginger in some green tea or I'll just do ginger uh, in, in maybe a dish that I'm making or a salad or something. Uh, but teas, putting ginger in a tea is excellent. By the way, ginger is also absolutely phenomenal for compresses. So if you have an ache in a shoulder, and I know this isn't necessarily singing related, but it actually is. So if you do um, a ginger compress on your throat, or if you have a, a lung um, issue and you put a ginger compress here for congestion um, and or uh, breathing issues, it is amazing. Be careful because it's extremely powerful. If you do a ginger compress right, it's going to be way more potent than like putting mentholatum or a deep heating rub on. It's gnarly and it lasts a long time and it's super healthy. It pulls the poisons out of your body. Incredible. Thyme. Thyme is really good. Like, you got thyme? No, T-H-Y-M, the herb thyme. That's also an excellent um, way to get, get circulation. Now, we've talked about turmeric, and I use different kinds. This stuff is really good. Um, there's other great, um, you know, for, uh, Dr. Furman's got one out. Um, Dr. Gundry's got a really good one, good one out, but just a great healthy turmeric. And be careful, because a lot of these herbs, if they come from a foreign country, and they're, again, not clean sourced, you could be putting a lot of poisons into your body. So just, you know, do a little research on the internet. I actually like this stuff because the new chapter is reasonable, and they make good products, and uh, this is a really good uh, turmeric here. Um, anyway, turmeric, so that's really great for circulation. Do it with black pepper. Um, someone reminded me of that in the last session when we talked about this, because it activates it, and it activates it in a way, and black pepper is also excellent for circulation. So they work as a compound together where they um, they activate each other, and it's just excellent for circulation and, and inflammation too. By the way, inflammation it's phenomenal. So maiden hair, it's actually really called ginkgo biloba. Uh, it's good for circulation, and it's also good for memory, brain loss, right? Or memory loss, brain loss. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Must not have worked for me. <laughs> anyway, no, really, it's good for memory loss. I forgot already. Um, and I really mean that though, it's awesome. Hawthorn is good. I could go through a lot of these, so I'm not gonna get a chance to, uh, but go to cola is excellent. Vitamin E is really good too. Uh, incorporate this into your diet by preparing foods that, you know, uh, and oils that use it, like wheat germ oil, hazelnut oil, sunflower oil, and other nut oils. Those have really high concentrations of vitamin E. And if we're not getting out a lot, being COVID, stuck in, shelter in place, and all that stuff, you really wanna get vitamin E. Now there's tincture drops. I have some here. Let me see. And you know why I decided to not put a bunch of stuff on the screen, you guys? I did it because I wanted to prove to you I actually use this stuff. So this um, this is also excellent. Just a good form of vitamin E. Good drops. You could put them on your skin. In fact, I'll do it right now. You could take it like this. You get a couple drops out. You put it on your skin. You just kind of suck it off, make sure your hands are clean. Um, and man, that's good for the day. That's like going out in a sunshine, a whole day of sunshine. Nothing beats a day of sunshine, but this is actually really cool and really good for you. Um, so I, I don't just talk about this stuff, I actually use it. I'm not an affiliate, I'm not sending, selling you supplements, I'm showing you what actually works. So um, vitamin B, B vitamins will help and the B supplements, we talked about that. But you can also get B vitamins in leafy green vegetables like the spinach shakes we talked about. Um, kale is a great source of these vitamins. Now iron is really good for women. You guys out there, Iron's not so good for men because it goes to the heart. It's not good. Women menstruate, so they actually lose a lot of iron. They can actually become anemic quicker than men uh, because they lose iron. So, and iron, as we said, takes the oxygen molecule, feeds it to the bloodstream, which goes to the muscle structures. Um, but so, women, it's good for you. Men, not so good. Fluid intake, guys, blood. Very important because our bodies are made of 75% fluid. We've got to stay, stay hydrated. Keeping your body well hydrated is maybe the best way of maintaining good circulation. I kid you not. Now, number six, probiotics. Now, probiotics can get really expensive, and I love this Gundry one right here. It's really, really good. This is a pre, pro, and postbiotic. It's three in one. So we've learned that there's not just probiotics that we take after we eat, and we hope that it helps with the good bacteria in the stomach. There's things that actually lay the foundation for a good probiotic, and then there's something else that helps the probiotic stay in the gut flora, um, also to maintain good gut health for good bacteria, to fight off bad bacteria. So there's three different kinds, but however, 
this is very expensive. The refrigeratables are very expensive. You don't have to do the expensive stuff. I do this because when I'm on the road, I want to take it with me. And if I don't have time to do these things I'm about to say, the best probiotics that you can get are fermented vegetables. Straight up. You can get all kinds of them. I'm just going to name a few. Sauerkraut. It's good for more than just putting on your hot dog. It's really good as an excellent, natural, healthy probiotic. Kimchi, you guys have seen it in the stores. Be careful because they use a lot of MSG in kimchi and things like that. So look at the label, make sure there's not monosodium glutamate in the MSG in it. Get it MSG free, uh, but it's kind of sauerkraut's you know, Korean cousin, so to speak, kind of like, you know, fermented cabbage, right? Um, kefir. Now, Ken, you just said stay away from dairy. Well, there are some dairy things you can do, and I didn't say stay away from it. I'm just, be careful, just be judicious and use some common sense. Kefir is a really good fermented milk drink, and, you know, it kind of tastes like yogurt, right? And there's different things you can do to sweeten it. You can add dates and, you know, you can add monk fruit or some other things if you want it sweeter. Don't add sugar. You can add some manuka honey if you want. Um, but anyway, and just like yogurt, and not all yogurts are created equal because um, actually what's a really good yogurt, believe it or not, if you're going to eat yogurt is eat Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt. It's a strained yogurt. It's really thick. It's kind of almost pasty, but it is really, really good in the probiotic department also. Greek yogurt. And I eat all this stuff. Um, kombucha. We started to talk about that. Now, that's a fermented, um, tangy fermented tea. So, usually they'll use, there's all kinds. They'll use fruits and things to do it. But what happens is it's actually got a lot of sugar, a lot of sugar in it. It's the sugar that creates this balance um, in the tea. Now, there's something called candida applicants, and, and I don't have time to go into candida, but it's actually um, a bad fungus in the gut. Poor women, women that have um, uh, women issues, if you know what I mean, uh, and they have to deal with a lot of, um, I used the word a minute ago, I just lost my mind. I, I need my ginkgo biloba to get my memory back. <laughs> no, um, anyway, so uh, you can have a lot of, um, ah, I'll think of the word in a minute. But anyway, this buildup in the body and kombucha is really excellent for that. So uh, it's good for yeast was what I was trying to think of. Uh, a yeast infection. And so this is really good for a good yeast in the stomach rather than a bad yeast. So even though there's a lot of sugar in it, it's a good sugar that you can have that's also really good. Miso soup. You've heard of miso, Japanese miso? It's a fermented paste, usually made with barley or rice or something. Soybeans, tempeh, you know, all that stuff is really good. They're made from naturally fermented soybeans, so that's also really good. And it's a good plant-based protein, so I highly recommend it. So now soy can be bad because again, GMO soy is really bad for you. So, um, and also too much soy in men can bring down our our testosterone count and our manufacturing of uh, uh, the the guys. <laughs> what's that word I'm looking for? Gosh, I'm just, so many times today is one of those days I can't remember a lot of my terminologies. I should have written it down. But anyway, our 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 count, our sperm count. That's what I meant to say. Um, it can actually reduce sperm count for for guys especially. So be careful, guys, if you're doing too much soy. Not necessarily a good thing. Uh, raw garlic on toast is excellent when it comes to. Um, you know, helping with um, uh, nature's antibiotics, um, you know, a throat infection and so forth. So I'm going to talk about throat infections. So number seven is the best supplements for throat infections. Now, there's a lot of things. Now, I mentioned garlic on toast. That's excellent. Wash or excuse me, brush your tongue with your toothbrush. I kid you not, brush your tongue. Even if it's white and gooey, if you have a throat infection, this is for throat infections. And use toothpaste, brush your tongue, spit it out right? Then take some perio wash. This stuff is awesome. Take it, slosh it around the mouth and gargle with it for 30 seconds. They make all kinds of different flavors. It's all natural. It's not like Listerine where you're practically gargling with kerosene. This stuff is completely healthy. If you swallow it, it's not the end of the world like, like Listerine would be um, or regular mouthwashes would be. Or, you know, and some people gar uh, gargle with salt, and you can do that too. But this stuff is excellent. It kills back bad bacteria, which is great. And then, believe it or not, get some pulled oils. Ken, what is a pulled oil? Like coconut oil. So when you brush your teeth, you can actually brush your teeth with a pulled oil. You could put a little bit of baking soda and some coconut oil, and you could put that with some peppermint or something in it, and brush your teeth with that. It's called a pulled oil, and it pulls the poisons out of your teeth, out of the, out of the tongue, and different things that where they can seep deeply in there. It pulls it out, and then you eliminate that when you rinse out your mouth with like a perio wash. So that is 
excellent for um, good uh, health for as for throat infections. Something else that is also really, really excellent, really, 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 really excellent is this stuff. Danielle Ladon's grapeseed extract. You just couple sprays under the tongue. If it's bitter, you know you're starting to get an infection. I don't taste anything right now, so I'm totally fine. But not only does it give you to determine whether or not you have a cold or flu coming on, if you do this stuff immediately when you start to feel a cold or flu, especially kind of something funky in the throat, the minute you do this stuff, if you do it immediately, boom, it goes away, straight up. This and zinc lozenges, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. I know I've talked about it before. I actually use this stuff, folks. This isn't just talking about putting a bunch of stuff on the screen armchair ivory tower talk, this stuff works. So zinc lozenges, I actually like nature's way. I know it has a, a couple of things in it that are uh, coagulants to hold it, to preservatives that to hold it together, but it works really good. They're really reasonably priced. Nature's way zinc lozenges, don't chew them. Just uh, let them in the side of your mouth or just suck on them until they dissolve. If the minute you feel a cold or flu or throat infection coming on, do this, I'm telling you. Now, you know what's funny about this is I have been saying this for 30 years talking about these kinds of supplements and all of a sudden COVID-19 comes along and says, well, if you really wanna fight off you know, COVID-19, you gotta take zinc and you gotta do uh, zithromycin and then hydrochloroquine and you know the other drugs that are talked about, which is malaria drugs. But this stuff, high doses of vitamin C, we've talked about that, and I, I don't have any with me, I actually ran out, but we talked about lipospheric or liposomal vitamin C, incredible, absolutely incredible for helping the immune function. So we talked about liposomal C and uh, uh, lipospheric C. Echinacea and golden seal is a tincture. Do I have that? Did I bring it? I guess I didn't bring that down. But echinacea, it, the sprays, don't get the tablets. Get the spray or get the tincture. You drop it on the back of your throat. You don't even swallow. You just let it slowly drip down. And, and you can get some with elderberry in it also. That's also excellent, elderberry. And you just slowly let it drip down the throat and it'll coat the throat. It's very spicy. You can do that and you can also do oregano oil. That's also excellent. Now some people, it's way too spicy for them so they freak out, oh my goodness. And it may be that. You may have to dilute it a little bit in something, you know, a coconut oil or something else. But you just do it real gently and you put it on the back of your throat and you just let it go all the way down and it's gonna blow your mind. It will heal your throat so quickly it'll freak you out. You're gonna go, oh my gosh, you know. Just within hours I feel so much better. Wild stuff, especially for those that are freaking out because they have shows coming up or performances and they have a throat infection and they wanna get rid of it. So Echinacea and Golden Seal Tincture. Now I talked about green tea with ginger. Just sip some green tea with ginger. You could put a, a little Manuka honey in it. If you wanna really get brave, put some garlic in there too because that helps a lot. It's gonna stink like a uh, But I'll tell you what, it works really, really great. B propolis spray. I'm out of that also because I've used some recently, but bee propolis spray in the back of the throat, made from bees. It's a derivation of, of, of propolis and it, they're just awesome. Um, now, uh, essential oil lozenges. We talked about this before. Try to get ones that are, have, are sugar-free. I love these things. This is called Thebes. These, this is a really, really good throat lozenge. It's sugar-free. They use stevia to sweeten it. This stuff is amazing and it comes with Thebes essential oils in it, which is a lot like eucalyptus. This and, and peppermint and you know other forms of mentholatum issue kinds of things in the throat. These things are excellent. They're expensive. You know, a bag, a big bag is like 20 bucks, and it's expensive. 20 bucks. But again, I mean, these things work so well, you just take one, you know, two if you need it. I mean, so what is that? 25 cents of lozenge or something? So it's worth it, man. These things are really worthy. Um, anyway, licorice root is good, good too. I meant to, you know, slippery elm and licorice root. So elderberry, slippery elm, and licorice root, those are all really good, and you can get those in in a throat lozenge, you can get them in a tincture. Uh, tea tree oil is good, peppermint's good. Um, sleep with a humidifier and put like some tea tree or some peppermint um, in, the, in the humidifier um, and then you know let the fumes waft throughout the night. Now what I personally do is I'll take a, an essential oil and I'll open it up and I'll put some on my finger and I'll put it right under my nose and I'll waft in the fumes and it just amazingly clears out the sinuses. This stuff is so good. So this is peppermint oil and it is very powerful. 
don't touch any other parts of the body after you touch this stuff because let me tell you, you'll wish you hadn't. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, that was from experience. We already talked about vitamin D drops, um, but I also want to talk about really good supplements for sinus infections. So, when I showed you the grape seed extract, you can also use that as a sinus rinse or a sinus spray. Something else you can do is colloidal silver. I like the big guns. This actually is 2,000 parts per million. You can get it down to 1,100 parts or you can get really, really diluted stuff like 80 parts per million. I don't think that works that well, but this stuff is incredible for fighting off viruses and helping with bacterial infections and so forth as a, as a spray or as a sinus rinse with a neti pot. You know, you do a little bit of, of whatever you're comfortable with. I actually will do like one drop of peppermint and I'll kind of let it drip through one side with some of this or or, or use um, grapeseed extract and then I do the other side and then I lean over and I let it completely rinse out of my nose and it's just absolutely fabulous. Um, now, uh, we talked about um, humidifiers, but there are some supplements that help with uh, uh, sinus infections. Now, we talked about cayenne pepper. That is excellent. It works great. Bromelain. Bromelain. Bromelain is a derivation of um, of uh, pineapple, you know, and so it's incredible, and it shows that the enzymes that are um, derived from the pineapple is just a, it's a superfood, um, and it reduces inflammation and swelling, particularly in the sinuses, um, and it also has other benefits um, if in combined with quercetin. And what do you spell quercetin? Q U E R C E. T I N, so bromelain is spelled B R O M E L A I N. And you combine these two, um, and it's a flavonoid. And in test tubes, uh, it inhibits. Um, or it becomes, I should say, a histamine. So it actually can help dry out in a healthy way, dry out the sinuses and open them up. Now, doctors, again, if you you don't wanna go see your doctor, they'll give you prednisone, they'll give you Flonase, they'll give you uh, these inhalers and inhibitors. And you know what I found is taking any kind of um, you know sinus over-the-counter medicine that's Western medicine, uh, it turns your mucus into glue and it has a greater propensity or greater chance of it staying in the sinus with bacteria and actually contributing to sinus infections. Yeah, I mean, you can get Claritin D in these different things that'll just dry you out to the bone and clear out the sinuses, and, and oftentimes it can help. I'm not saying it doesn't, and that with prednisone, because it opens up the cavities and lets the, the, the medicine work and get in deep and do its job. So I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying natural remedies for me are a lot better. So bromelain and quercetin, really good stuff. Number nine, lung support. And I know we're getting in the home stretch here, guys. We're already at an hour. Can you? talk for an hour straight. Yeah, I shared an hour of lifetime of information and I was able to put all my lifetime of information into an hour about things that help for specifically for the throat. But um, best lung support. Now, I don't have time to go through it, but there's some companies out there particularly in light of what's happened with COVID-19 that have made some really good combining products. So instead of going out and getting all of these um, on their own and trying to combine them and reading to this and you find yourself with a handful of supplements taking them, there's some companies that have put out some good stuff. Ridgecrest called Clear Lungs. Uh, the extra strength capsules are the best. Those are excellent for lung support. We're on to lung support now, guys. White Lung Cleanse and Detox by Natra Pro. That's also excellent. I didn't get a chance, I forgot to mention, this is actually lipospheric glutathione. This stuff is a phenomenal anti antioxidant and really an incredible immune bus uh, builder and really helps with the regeneration of deterioration of vocal folds. It also is proven in reducing or eliminating nodes and polyps. It is very expensive. This is a hundred bucks for this little bottle, but I'm telling you straight up, you have to keep it refrigerated. This stuff is rock star. I can't tell you how many people that develop cysts or polyps. Nodes are harder to get rid of because that's the actual stage of a callus, but a polyp is like a blister or a lesion that's on the cords themselves. This heals your vocal folds so fast, unbelievable. 
three, five days, you're already feeling three to five days after completely losing your voice, lipospheric or liposomal glutathione. And, and this stuff is just rock star, rock star good. By the way, I forgot to mention in the green tea world, what kind of green teas do you get? I really like this stuff, Harney and Sons. By the way, folks, it's obvious I use this stuff. It's an open bag. This stuff, they make really great, healthy, organic teas. And I like their Sencha green tea. This stuff is excellent. But they have all kinds of excellent teas, Harney and Sons. These guys are excellent. Sorry, getting back to lung support. I didn't mean to get sidetracked there. But I want I wanted to mention the glutathione because I forgot. Um, Dr. Tobias Lung Health Cleanse and Detox, another good one. Success Chemistry Premium Lung Cleanse and Detox, that's also good. You're going to have to rewind this stuff, guys. Um, uh, Amate Life Lung Support Seasonal Comfort Supplement, those are good. Amate is spelled A M A T E. Uh, breathe Quercetin um, and a Nettie Leaves for Clearing Airways. So you can take Quercetin and nettle leaf, nettle, N-E-T-T-L-E, and leaf, and you can actually do it over uh, a, uh, a heated uh, humidifier, which is really, really good, or you could put it in your humidifier at night. Both are excellent. Host defense, multi a mushroom. Now, I forgot to talk about mushrooms because mushrooms are also incredible. I did talk about it in the dietary thing, but you can get a multi mushroom um, powder and it's really good. It's, it tastes a lot like mushrooms, so you have to be okay with the, the mushrooms. But this host defense breath multi mushroom capsule, host defense is what it's called, like um, being a good host to someone that's staying at your house. Um, anyway, Activa, Nat Naturals Lung Support Supplement is good. Activa, Activa. Uh, and the last one is Natural Factors Lung Bronchial Sinus and Health Tablets. These are all really good so that you don't have to go around and find all this stuff and go, geez, which one should I get? Most of these have a lot of it in it already. And this, these companies, a lot of them put this together because of the COVID-19 thing. You really actually die from pneumonia. It's a lung disorder, as you know. And so these help with lung support. So this is excellent. Last but not least, number 10, what is the best thing for diets, diet support for singing? Don't eat just before bed. Don't eat especially big, fatty, spicy, red meat kinds of foods or, or creamy sauces or, or any of this stuff because it increases at the possibility of acid reflux. It increases acid in the gut, can, can help you know, uh, promulgate or promote bad, bad gut function, bad dietary tract function, and can just wreak, wreak havoc on your vocal folds. The, the, the acid reflux going up to the lung, to that. And so can sinus infections too, that can all do that. So guys, this was an incredible amount of information. I went 11 minutes over. I wanna go ahead and answer some questions. Now I wanna remind you guys that next week, or not next week, this coming Saturday at 9 a.m., I'm gonna be doing a Q&A so, Angela, what about chocolate? You know, there's good question, Angela. There's two schools of thought on chocolate. Now, if you're eating a really high cacao content of chocolate, like somewhere between 78% and 85% cacao, um, it's okay to eat dark chocolate, black dark chocolate. Anything less than that, you're eating a lot of sugar and it can contribute again to inflammation and uh, sugar issues. So let me scroll down to a few of these kids. I wanna make sure that I answer some questions. Uh, what about, um, Rock legends and their booze drugs. Okay, well, you know, this is a good question. So booze drugs, there's a lot of different kind of booze drugs out there, but I want to remind you guys that any time, any drug is a band-aid for good health. It's taking a drug so that we can, you know, continue a lifestyle we think we want to do or something that's trying to help us get off of one thing and it ends up putting us on to another thing that is not necessarily gonna help good you know, kidney and liver and heart and, and, and circulation and different stuff. So uh, Josh, what I'll try to do is I'll try to do, I'm sorry Angela, you are so right. I meant to mention avocados. Thank you for mentioning the avocado is incredible. Just incredible, good source of fat, good source of energy, just a phenomenal superfood. So avocados, thank you for reminding me, Angela. Again, I have so many foods I wanted to mention and I, 
I'm already, like I said, an hour and 10 minutes into this and I, I, I didn't even mention any homeopathy at all and I could have talked a whole hour on just homeopathic things for each function, the throat and the lungs and circulation and different things like that and maybe I'll do that on, we'll call it homeopathy stuff so we could talk about that. Roman, can allergies get in the way of improving your vocal technique? Absolutely. It swells your vocal folds. You get, uh, mucus can come in on the, on the cords themselves. We've talked a lot about that and I just discussed that. Um, Kevin, I'm vegetarian. I guess that's what's good for my, my voice. What do you think? Well, you know, vegetarian is not necessarily the healthiest lifestyle. I mean, you can still eat lots of cheese and a lot of things that are not necessarily good for you eating as a vegetarian. Vegan, yes. Vegetarian, I, I, I'm not so convinced doing going that route from some of the some of the ways I've seen vegetarians eat that it's necessarily the healthiest lifestyle. I'm glad you don't want to eat anything with a face. I get that, but at the same time, it's not necessarily the healthiest for your body. Meep. M-E-E-P. Can one of the mods please remind Ken to link that ancient nutrition in the description below? Yeah, I can actually. Um, it's Dr. Axe, A-X-E, and I'm not a fan of his big salesy promotion stuff that he does all the time, but he actually does make some good products. Not all of his products, but this particular one is excellent and it's a really good price. In fact, I got like buy four, get one free. Um, and so he'll run specials from time to time. So it's Dr. Axe, the famous salesy guy that's on TV all the time. That's how you look up ancient nutrition. He has some good vitamins, good multivitamins too. So anyway, Adam, fermented foods are not good for you. You're wrong, Adam. They're very good for you. <laughs> They're very good. It's how you ferment them and going through the process of doing it correctly. So Adam, in some sense, you could be correct depending on how it's done, but fermented foods are a really, really great probiotic. Maria, olive oil is best. You're right, Maria, olive oil is rock star good. And you know, you could put olive oil on almost anything. You could pour it on your steamed veggies, you could make a salad dressing from it, you could put it over toast with some garlic and salt, Olive oil is excellent. How about disinfectant? Asking for a friend. <laughs> no, we're not gonna be snorting any disinfectants these days. Um, by the way, um, th that was a ridiculously taken out of context comment uh, about you know taking a disinfectant. It was the concept of how it was used and light rays that are used for all kinds of, of different sources of healing. So there, there's a whole lot more to that story. Rock Girl 777, been treating my sinus issues with saline water. Yep, saline rinses are excellent. Saline is just a salt water. I mentioned that already. Some people use salt water. Saline solutions are excellent. So you're right, Rock Girl, good job. Crystal, put the lime in the coconut and call me in the morning. You're right, lime or lemon is great in coconut water and coconut um, oils is good too. A lot of people do um, celery juice and lime or lemon in just a little bit of water and it is incredible for pH and acid balance if you do it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Excellent stuff. D drops are good as they act as antiviral too. You're right, correct. That's why I said building up the immune function and vitamin D3 drops do act as antiviral. Kyle, oh uh, Kyle, what did he say? I went a little too far. Ken, is chicken okay on a gig day as long as it's not been fried? But it's, yeah, absolutely, of course it is. Now let's talk about that real quick, guys. When we're, when we're talking about gig days, um, you can eat all the way up to these healthy foods, all the way up to about an hour before performance. But anything that gets close to within that hour of time, you start to regurgitate, your stomach starts to bubble up, you get some gas, some other things like this, and acids can come up in the stomach. And we really want to avoid that. So don't stop eating. Don't not eat because your adrenaline is really high and you feel like you don't need to eat. Make yourself eat, but try to do it outside the one hour window prior to performance. So good question there, uh, Kyle. Thank you. Anyway, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm way over time here. I'm going to go ahead and do a Q&A this coming Saturday. So I'll take the collective of a lot of the comments that we've had um, that I didn't get to. We'll do that this Saturday. And then again, the following Thursday, we'll resume uh, more really great topics. So thank you for joining me. God bless you guys. And until next time, peace out.